Welcome back guys. You know me, I'm Zell, and today we're looking at another one of our Todd Knife and Tool prototypes, the Raptor. <laughs> Alright guys, before I pull the leather back here, this Raptor is a prototype. Everything you see here is possibly final form, possibly not. There may be a lot of changes. There may be few changes. But we wanted to bring it to you guys and let you guys tell us what you like and don't like about the Raptor and the Raptor XL that we're going to look at soon. So we're going to pull the leather back now and get a look at the Todd Knife and Tool Raptor. Now, what are we getting here? Well, it's a full titanium knife. Uh, both scales on this version are titanium, backspacers titanium, screws, etc., except for the pivot. Pivot is stainless. And we are at a closed length of 4.666 inches, a handle thickness of 0.449, and a closed height of 1.5. A little explanation there. One of our philosophies is to get a EDC and somewhat tactical knife in your pocket that you want to carry because it's not crazy tall, it's not crazy heavy, and it's not crazy thick. You know, eventually we want to have models out there that you can clip to your uh, gym shorts or your lounge pants and not have your pocket weighed down a bunch. Uh, we came close to achieving it here, but as new models come out and we get better at our processes, we're gonna get closer and closer and closer to that and I already know for a fact that we can shave nearly an ounce off this one. It, sh it weighs in at 4.84 right now and with a couple of changes we can get this thing down to I'm hoping under four ounces. But for now the full titanium version is 4.84 4 ounces and let's get a look at it. Right now we have a Cerakote finish on this one and we've got some milling across here a little milling back through here, a little milling up there, just to give you some accents. And we do have a lanyard slot. The lanyard slot is in the backspacer because we wanted to give the person that wanted a lanyard a space for a lanyard, but for those of us like myself that don't really care if we have a lanyard or not, we wanted to hide that lanyard in the knife and not have it as an extra hole sticking out and give it a style element so that it's not just a hole drilled through the backspacer and the handle scales. So that's what we came up with. Let us know what you think. And as we roll this guy around, we've got a full backspacer in this model. Uh, that may change in the future. I don't know. Uh, we've got some other models with uh, some fancier stuff in the backspacer. And... Uh, well, we'll just see as the future rolls on. And right there is our flipper tab. Currently, we do not put jimping on the flipper tabs. And uh, I don't know if we're going to. These knives flip so well that the jimping really isn't needed. So, uh, you know, it's one of those things. I'm not a big fan of flipping, of jimping on flipper tabs if it's not needed. And uh, neither is my partner. So... Yeah, we'll kind of see how that goes. One thing I do want you to notice, see that pocket milling right there? Right there and right there? That is... That is designed so that you have a place for your finger to land that's not super sharp. And it works pretty darn good, and we didn't even mention those. We got some nice holes milled down in here, and that's for style and to lighten everything up just a little bit. So, moving on around to the clip side, uh, everything mirrors this, the presentation side, except we have a lock bar cut out, of course, and our lock bar relief. Now, currently these knives are uh, carburized titanium on steel for the lock interface, and uh, we plan on going to lock bar inserts, but so far we're having really good luck like this and the knives we've got out there have been used extensively. We carry them. They're not knives that get thrown, you know, under glass or something because they're prototypes. And we haven't had any issues yet. So, you know, we are working 
towards the lock bar inserts, but they just haven't been a priority yet uh, because everything has worked so well. And there is our pocket clip. And here we wanted to give you something stylish that was very functional. And I think we've done a good job here. We've got some pretty good style, and whenever you see the Raptor XL, the style really pops, and we'll get to it here in a few days. But there's our pocket clip. You can see we've been carrying these. They haven't been sitting on the shelf or under glass, and we have quite a bit of space under it. It's just a, it works well. We'll get to that whenever we get her down in the jeans. And uh, let's do, get a quick look at the blade, and then we'll, do some size comparison. Now this knife weighs 4.84 ounces, but future versions will probably weigh less. So we've got our Rat Model 1, and it of course weighs a little less than the Rat and a lot less than our Buck 110. Doesn't have quite as much blade as a Buck 110. We've got a uh, 3.5 inch blade here and here, 3.6 uh, something on the Buck 110. And the interesting thing here is we do weigh more than the Delica, but we're not a whole huge amount bigger than a Delica. I mean, yeah, it is, but uh, not a vast amount. And I would like to throw a few more knives up here. And everything from here on out, we're lighter, or the Raptor is lighter than. But just to give you a comparison against some of the other knives that are out there that should end up in about the same class. So there you go. And those are all some of my favorites, by the way. So there's always that. And now let's get a close look at our blade design. And what we've decided to go with, with the Raptor series and the upcoming Master Chief is a modified worn clip. Let me get that rat back out here. And what we mean by modified worn clip is if you lay the edge down right there on a flat surface, you can see we've got a little bit of belly towards the tip. And that's on purpose. That's so that whenever you're doing your EDC tasks, you have a little bit of belly to work with and it's not all straight and flat. And uh, we've been using these extensively. We like that feature. And uh, it will most likely make it to any uh, custom mid-tech or production models. And as we get a look here at the blade itself, we have a full fuller that runs the full length of the blade. And wow, this thing is hard with that black blade to get focused on, but you can see there runs down both sides of the blade. And we're flat ground up to that fuller. Got some big jimping up here. We'll talk about that in ergonomics. And Here's another one of those points. We have an actual Ricasso here instead of the soft Ricasso that you would get on, say, a Hinderer and many other knives that have large forward finger choils. And we may do some soft ones later, but here's our thought process here. If that nasty box comes out of the alley on your way home and you have to shred some cardboard to make it home safely, this Ricasso, just this little bit, if you have to stab into that box to get that first shredder cut going, uh, you've got something, a little something to stop you from ramming that blade all the way in. And even if you do run it in past here, then everything's soft for you to pull it back out and take another slash at it so you can finish your shredding. Where if we had uh, done it like the Hinderer does and many others, you end up with this catch right there. And that cat, that edge right there will catch on things. If you've used a knife like this very much, you find that out. Now, is it a big deal? No. But in that situation, it might be a big deal, and we put a little thought into that, and that's why we have the Spider's Co. style Ricasso on these blades right now. And we do have a forward finger choil, of course. And the blade is currently made out of 440C, and that's a prototyping steel for us, though we do like it a lot. The heat treat we're given 440C uh, makes it a very, very nice steel. And from here, I am going to give you a pause and read card. And I do note that everything on that pause and read card is subject to change. 
and definitely will change as we move to production, mid-tech, and customs. But I just wanted to give you an idea of the current numbers for the Raptor. All right, guys, mechanically, what do we end up with? Well, we've got a ball bearing pivot, just like any other knife right now, well, except for the hinderer. And uh, we do have currently hardened or carburized titanium on steel for the lock bar. And uh, we do plan on moving quickly into putting lock bar inserts on there. However, we haven't encountered a lot of lock stick with the way that we've been doing them. And it's, uh, I, you know, I don't know that it's really necessary. Will we go ahead and do it? Well, yeah, because we kind of have to to stay with everyone else, but it's been nice. I've used, what, five or six of our knives, and uh, I have yet to encounter any lock stick. So, you know, it's, it, it's all about getting everything lined up and getting that engagement of the lock bar correct and right now we've got oh probably 40 percent lock up and there you go slides right off there so i don't know and we're getting our lock up really good and i am just having fits keeping this thing focused where our lock up is solid no blade play whatsoever in the knife. And uh, you know, that's one of those things, especially whenever you're looking at future mid techs and customs, we plan to have knives that lock up properly and have no blade play. And there are some little tricks that I'm not gonna talk about that we do down inside that pivot that uh, facilitate that. So yeah, I'm not gonna give you the full mechanical breakdown right now whenever we have some uh, go to mid tech or production we'll get more into how the pivot system works and now on to ergonomics whenever you get this knife in your hand and it really was designed for most of your tasks to be held in this manner with your index finger in that forward finger choil and that gives you a lot of control over the knife and makes using the knife a pleasure really for me and yeah, I know, I was one of the designers. Blame it on me, but you know, you can get it back here for your draw cuts and for your push cuts. You can even grab it up here for your push cuts. And if you really need to bear down on things, that's where this jimping comes into play. You can really bear down on it. And that jimping, it's big, it's square, and it will get a hold of your hand without cutting you up. But it is a obviously a little more aggressive than what you see on some knives. But if you lay your finger into it for a hard cut, it's there and it's gonna leave some indentions on your thumb, but it's not gonna cut you up, but it's gonna hold you in place solid. Now there is no jimping back here. That's also by design. Whether you have the knife back here or you have the knife right there, that final edge there and that ramp is enough to hold you in place without putting a bunch of jimping up there and you know giving you something rough to hang on to and uh, it's actually a beautiful thing we spent a lot of time making sure we got that little curve right this little drop and that little curve drop from here through that curve and uh, i think we nailed it you know hopefully we can you know not too many months from now we'll have some of these in your hands and you can tell us if we nailed it or not so Anyhow, that's our ergonomic thing, and we'll just get to here and roll the knife up in my hand, and that's what you come up with. You don't have your thumb all bent weird trying to get into this little ramp here, and even whenever you get it back here. And I've talked about simple handle designs many times now, and that's what you're getting here. You have a little bit of a hook there, and widens out a little bit and then narrows off. My medium large hands fit it very well and there's nothing cutting into me. Now, one thing I do want to note on these knives is there are several relief cuts. You can see two of them right there. If I can get the camera to work with me, there we go. Relief cut there and a bit of a relief cut there. 
And those relief cuts are designed to guide your fingers into where you need to go, whether you're using your left or right hand. Because uh, Seth and I are both what you call cross dominant, and that basically means we're mostly uh, ambidextrous, but not quite. So we wanted to be able to index the knife with either hand without looking at it. So that's what those cuts there are designed to do. And they work well, in my opinion. Like I said, hopefully we'll get some of these in you guys' hands in the future, and you can tell us what you think. But anyhow, guys, this is our Todd Knife and Tool Standard Size Raptor. Modified Warncliffe blade, fully fullered blade, got that big mean looking jumping up on top. And with this model we have some mill cuts to accent the knife. And I really like what we've done here with our lanyard hole, lanyard slot if you will. And I'm really digging our pocket clip. Of course I'm biased. Let me know what you think. But uh, Seth and I are really enjoying these knives and we're working hard to get to the point where we can get them in your hands. And uh, just so you know, we do have things in the works. I do not know exactly when it's all gonna come to fruition. I'll keep you guys updated on that. Uh, whenever I have information, I'll pass it along when I can. But I just wanted to bring you this knife and let you get a good look at it because, as you can see, our fit our fit's always been good from the very first one. But our finish and our detail work, uh, in my opinion, is stepped up quite a bit from here. And we'll look at the Raptor XL in a few days. And uh, it's got a few more flourishes on it. Oh, one last thing. Forgot to put it in the pocket, didn't I? Talked all about that pocket clip, and I forgot to stick it in here. That's what you get with it in the pocket. Zoom in, get a little closer look. So we've got a standard size EDC slash tactical knife that fits in your pocket. The only thing on the back side of the knife that you have that's sticking out is right here and it's nice and rounded on this inside so that you can get your hand in and out of the pocket anyhow guys this has been the Todd Knife and Tool Raptor let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions any ideas stuff you love stuff you don't like please put it in the comments and uh, we'll take any and everything into consideration as we move forward with these knives, getting closer and closer to bringing uh, customs, mid-techs, and production models to you. You guys have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time.